spill that one. Still to come on the show, more football than you can handle in a month of Sundays and the strange sport of Hornison. Now in 1990, a talented young Tasmanian named Paul Stokel was offered a fully sponsored Formula 3000 test session with the powerful Mansell Madwick Motorsport team at Snedderton Circuit in England. A dream come true for Paul. He finished half a second off the lap record held by Pedro Chaves, who was not only the number one Triple M team driver, but also the eventual 1990 British Formula 3000 champion. Paul was offered a drive in the 91 European 3000 season Paul returned to Australia absolutely ecstatic, but after a long and fruitless search for the required 50% corporate funding, the opportunity was lost. Welcome today to Wide World of Sports, uh, Paul. It's, uh, it must have been absolutely devastating for you to, uh, to get that sort of result, to come back and uh, find it tough to gain sponsorship. Yeah, it was. It was terrific. I mean, 1990 was a terrific year, and I came back, as you say, ecstatic. And um, the following year, to try and chase that the budget required to do the series, it just it just all went flat and it was very hard to accept. Does it seem to me that in Australia you need actually to be a winner before anyone will talk to you? You just about exhausted every potential drive and uh, potential sponsor within the country in a space of three or four months. Yeah, I mean, we approached nearly everyone possible and I ended up going to England the following year to chase up sponsorship over there and it's so difficult for an Australian driver uh, to attract the corporate funds needed to you know, attempt to, to race in these, these, these categories in England. Um, yeah, and I just found it nearly impossible to obtain. Well, Mansell Madgwick uh, Motorsport, they reckoned uh, after watching you drive over there that you were one of the great discoveries other than Ayrton Senna. Could I just read a paragraph from a letter from Mansell Madgwick Motorsport uh, Limited? Our research and experience tells us that drivers of Paul's age and limited experience would not be able to drive a car which effectively has the same performance as a 1988 Formula One car. Not only did Paul drive the car as an experienced F3000 driver, his times were within half a second of our current leader in the British Formula 3000 series. We are so excited with the potential of this extraordinary talented young man that Mansell Madgwick would be prepared to make all efforts to secure sponsorship to cover 50% of the required budget. Now that was a very firm offer. It must have been so exciting. I mean, what is the next step? Where do you go from here now? Um, well, that's a good question. There's, there's various different categories in England. I mean, Formula 3000 is probably probably one step below Formula One and it'd be great to get into but you know the, the amount of money they talk is absolutely incredible. Uh, there are a lot of other categories over there that are, are really good as well. Like Formula Opal Lotus for example which runs a, a European series and also a, a Nations Cup which is a, a race for different countries around the world that attend uh, is an absolutely terrific class and some of the drivers that have been through it have made their way into Formula One and it's a great stepping stone so that would be an excellent class to get into. Well, Keki Rosberg basically is, is OK for you and Paul Engels, another Adelaide driver, to represent Australia in the Nations Cup. Uh, is that still going to happen? I think it comes up later in September. Yeah, well, we're all set to go, but unfortunately we, we still haven't secured the funds needed. Like, it's a fairly substantial amount of money to do one race. But it is representing Australia. The cars we've painted in Australian colours. Um, we'll be flying the flag for Australia, and we have the support of with the teams over there and, and Russell, as you say, that's already based in Germany at the moment, and I'm a South Australian guy, we could take out, the, take out the race, but unfortunately we still haven't got the money as yet, but we're still working on it. How much money are we talking about, Paul? To do that one race, we're probably looking around about 60,000 Australian dollars, which is a fair bit for, for one race, but it includes a lot of testing, it includes the transport costs, we've got to list the cars, we've got to provide a team, so it covers basically everything. What about the... Uh the possibility if you win over there it will be like winning an Olympic gold won't it? The opportunities will flow from there. Yeah it would be. I mean it's like the Olympic Games of motorsport. Every car that everyone's in is identical so it all comes down to driver talent and it's a team effort so both drivers have got to finish as high up as possible and obviously if, if they can finish close to the front you can win it so it's for, for Australia so you're basically racing for Australia. Last question just quickly your immediate future then any drives coming up on the horizon? Um, well, I'm currently based in Adelaide at the moment and I've secured a drive in a Formula Brabham team over here for next year run by a company called Brana Engineering in Adelaide and a guy called Malcolm Ramsey has just bought the latest in carbon fibre cars which are Formula 3000 cars from England uh, and we're going to be converting them to Formula Brabham and it looks, you know, an all-out attempt to win the championship next year so that's looking great.
Well, Paul, thank you very much for being on Wide World of Sport, and we wish you well, and just hope that there is someone out there with some sponsorship that will give you a chance to use your talent. Yeah, thanks very much. Be great. Okay, we've been talking to Paul Stokel, a uh, young driver with a great deal of ability. Let's hope that he does get a chance to show up on the world scene and realise the dream, become a Formula One driver. Still to come on the show, highlights of the US PGA.